hospice. Yes, we always bring you a word of the show. Today, it's hospice. Is there a hospice charity shop on a street near you, where you are in Wiltshire? Well, for the first time, they're now providing more money to the hospices they support than actually funding they get from government. Hospice UK has described this as unsustainable and calls on fairer funding, giving the vital end-of-life services that hospices provide. Now, Prospect Hospice needs £8 million a year to stay operational. And less than a quarter of that comes from the government, so the rest has to be fundraised. Sheila Popert is Medical Director for Prospect Hospice in Rawton. Sheila, talking about this funding, it sounds quite astonishing that now more funding is coming from charity shops rather than a, a government. It is. It's quite extraordinary. Uh, we have 18 uh, hospice shops for Prospect, and they do. They raise more than we receive from the government, and it's becoming quite critical because there's huge pressure uh, sort of on the everybody's pockets and we're so grateful to our amazing community who put their hands in theirs to support us Um, but ideally the NHS should be providing more of this funding. So uh, is that funding has it been reduced or is it cost going up? Well it's it's a combination of things Uh, it it differs in different areas of the country Um, but for us our funding has remained absolutely static for the last eight or nine years so that means there's been sort of no uplift in it at all but obviously the costs of everything have gone up hugely so whether that's the um the energy that we use or the wages that we have to pay our costs have gone up but the funding hasn't matched that so how concerned are you about the sort of sustainability of the sort of current format where you're having to rely so much on your charity shops rather than that money you'd expect from the government Well, it's extremely difficult and sadly we have had to close six of our hospice inpatient unit beds. We have the capacity to run 12 but we're down to six. However, I have to say that in the sort of the last few months, our local community have been amazing at uh, supporting us and helping us to fill in the, the black hole that we have. Um, but it is critical, but it, and not just for us, that's for hospices across the country. We're all finding it very difficult to continue to provide the services. And you're talking about the support you've had locally, obviously through going to the charity shops, but I imagine in other ways and forms as well to support oh, yeah. you. Oh, yes, things like the, the Starlight Walk, the, you know, there are, our amazing fundraising team are putting on events sort of throughout the year and every little bit counts. For example, you know, every pound that somebody spends on buying a book in a hospice shop uh, enables us to provide several cups of tea for distressed families and every single penny counts. And I'm sure that the end-of-life care services that you provide, they're still very much needed. Oh, they are. I mean, hospices, I think, are sort of incredibly important because the period around death is as important as their time around birth. And it's an incredibly precious time. And like birth, dying can either be easy or difficult. And um, hospices are there, not just for those who are actually dying, but for anybody who has been diagnosed with a life-limiting diagnosis. And we offer a huge range of support, which is tailored to the individual's needs. And hospice care is just is so important because the sort of the last chapters in somebody's life um, are important, not just for the person themselves, but also for those who love them. And the manner of somebody's dying lives on in the memories of those who are left behind. And what we try to do is to enable people to live as well as they can right until the very end. And we want the memories of those left behind to be as good as they possibly can be. Do you see any way of reinstating the, the, those beds then that you, you have been up till now been able to, to supply for yes. people? I mean, I think I, I think the, you know, our amazing sort of community does all that they can, but what we badly need is more funding from the 
NHS. And I think we have to hope that with the um, government saying that they want to prioritise palliative and end-of-life care, that some of the money that's going into the NHS, a bit more of that is actually diverted towards the services that we offer. And in fact, just a little uh, promotion here on the 11th of October, which is Friday at 11.15 a.m. at the hospice, the MP for Swindon South, Heidi Alexander, and the MP for Swindon North, Will Stone, will be joining Jeremy Loon, who's our chief executive, for a Q&A session. So um, the public can ask whatever questions they want at that. And I'm sure you've got some questions to ask as well, Sheila, have you? <laughs> Certainly. It, it, it does seem, it seems very short-sighted that so little funding is given to us. Because also, when hospices are providing care, that's actually taking some of the burden off the NHS. Because if we're supporting the patients, then they're needing less appointments with their GPs, they have less admissions to hospital. So it actually saves the NHS money if they would give us a bit more. Sheila Popert, a medical director for the Prospect Hospice in Rawton. Is Prospect uh, is Hospice Awareness Week this week? So I'd love to hear from you. If you have used um, you or your family been part of a hospice uh, treatment, do let us know and and what difference it made to you and your your family.